Hello everyone. Let us look at uh, image restoration. So, what do we mean by image restoration? Image restoration is a class of methods that aim to remove or reduce the degradation that have occurred while the digital image was being obtained. See, what is restoration? When we can do restoration when something is lost. What is lost now? Image is lost. Why it is lost? Because of the degradations that happened during the acquisitions of the acquisition of the image. What is the difference between image enhancement and image restoration? It seems uh, for a layman, it, it seems uh, both of them are one and the same. But image enhancement is simply improving uh, the visual perception or feature enhancement uh, that we generally do. But here in image restoration, we do the inverse process of the degradation that happened during the acquisition of the image. We need to restore the image. And what are the degradations that can happen? When they can happen? All natural images when displayed uh, have gone through some sort of degradation and they will happen during display mode, during acquisition mode or during processing mode. What are the causes of degradation? The degradations may be due to sensor noise. See, uh, any uh, image that we take, they are taken using a camera. So the cameras will have an array of sensors. There can be so, uh, so many noises associated with the sensor. Sometimes the sensor itself may be a defective sensor. Okay, the next thing is blur due to camera misfocus. Because of the misfocus of the camera on the object, there can be a blur occurring in the image. And the next and most important thing is relative object camera motion. Whenever there is a relative motion between object and the camera, you can observe this uh, motion blur. This is called as a motion blur. You might have uh, experienced this when you are trying to take uh, pictures using your mobile phone. So when you are uh, trying to uh, take the picture using your mobile phone, you might have uh, moved your hand uh, by accident or you might have uh, removed, uh, you know, you might have uh, moved your hand thinking that the image is already taken. In such cases, you can find this motion blur. So uh, such sort of motion blur can be modeled and removed using uh, this image restoration techniques. And the next thing is random atmospheric turbulence. Random atmospheric turbulence uh, is all about uh, the atmospheric, you know, the degradation due to the atmospheric turbulence. For example, if there is a, uh, if you are uh, taking a picture early in the morning, let us say, during the month of June or February, what is going to happen? You, you can see the fog everywhere. So, because of the fog and all, you can, there is some sort of degradation happens. So, that degradation is because of this random atmospheric turbulence. There are some other regions which are not included in this. Those regions can also cause degradation. The next thing is, uh, okay, what does the image restoration, uh, perf you know, techniques, uh, how well we can perform, how well we can restore our image, what does it depend on? It depends on two things. Our knowledge about the original image and our knowledge about the degradations. If we know about degradation, we can invert, we can always invert the process and get back our original image. If we know, if we have good you know good knowledge about the original image, still we can get back our image. So this is based on uh, uh, these are the two factors that can influence the performance of the image restoration algorithms. What is the difference between image enhancement and restoration? Image enhancement is concerned more with the accentuation or extraction of image features while restoration of the image deals with the restoration from degradations. Image enhancement does not need to, you know, uh, have the image to be degraded. Even if the image is good enough, we still do the enhancement for the you know, purpose of uh, extracting the features or maybe for the purpose of visual enhancement. And image restoration is all about bringing back the image in case of a degradation function, in case of a degradation happened to the image. Image enhancement problems are difficult to quantify, whereas restoration problems can be quantified precisely. Image enhancement problems, so we, you know, we rarely quantify them and uh, we rarely measure any performance, uh, you know, we, we generally can't measure the performance of image enhancement techniques, whereas the image restoration is always uh, mostly an optimization problem that we look at. And 
most of the times we can measure the uh, you know uh, in synthetically we can measure the restoration accuracy of the restoration as well so when we are doing this uh, this is the whole idea of uh, image restoration algorithms we have f of x comma y the original image and we have a degraded image with us we don't have f of x comma y with us we have the degraded image which is g of x comma y what is our aim our aim is to bring back f of x comma y from g of x comma y by doing some inverse process so the original image this is what you know what happened due, during the degradation we have the original image f of x comma y which has gone through some degradation which is represented by function degradation function capital h and then the output of this degradation is added with some noise to give us the degraded image g of x comma y in order to keep it simple and easy for us we always try to assume that the degradation function is linear and position invariant so that we can always uh, uh, you know get the output of the system just by convolution of f of x comma y and h of x comma y then our problem is not degradation our problem is restoration from the degraded image how do we restore the restore from the degradation image we use some restoration filters which are generally inverse process of uh, the degradation function and however you know to reduce the noise uh, we will generally employ some uh, low pass filters and uh, you know we try to get our estimated image which is called as f hat of x comma y this f hat of x comma y is supposed to be similar to f of x comma y this is what we have so g of x comma y the degraded image is equal to h of f of x comma y the output of the degradation system plus eta of x comma y where eta of x comma y is the noise then we assume that h is linear when we call a system to be linear when it obeys both the superposition as well as the homogeneity properties so h of a f1 of a f1 of x comma y plus b f2 of x comma y is equal to a into h of f1 of x comma y plus b into h of f2 of x comma y where f1 and f2 are any two inputs and y f you know an operator having the input and output relationship g of x comma y is equal to h of f of x comma y we treat this as a position invariant system if a delay in both x and y will cause the same delay uh, in the input of course will cause the same delay in the output as well so h of f of x comma h of f of x minus alpha comma y minus beta is equal to g of x minus alpha comma y minus beta for any f of x comma y and any alpha and beta it obviously means that there is no you know because of the uh, shift in the because of the shift uh, there will not be any degradation happening uh, in the shape of the input signal and for the first case i mean to say for the linearity case we have uh, zero zero input and zero output for uh, the homogeneity property that is the meaning of it see uh, why this linear position invariant uh, degradation assumption is very important because of this whole reason okay the output can be measured as the convolution of the input and the impulse response of the system which is given by this particular expression and of course a noise is being added here g of x comma y is equal to h of x comma y convolved with f of x comma y plus eta of x comma y if we take uh, the frequency domain representation of this then convolution will simply become multiplication and g of u comma v is equal to h of u comma v multiplied with f of u comma v plus eta of u comma v so this is for if this is if we assume linear position invariant degradation but generally we will never have a linear position invariant degradation but we can always a non linear position degradation a position invariant degradation with the linear position invariant uh, degradations <coughs> for non linear systems it will be very complicated to get the output for linear systems we know how to get the output this is the advantage we have so what are the different noise models that we that we can consider this is a gaussian Uh, we have this is the histogram of this particular signal if you see there are three different intensity values and the three different intensity values uh, 
will become uh, the three means that we see here and uh, we have the Gaussian distribution along the three means and here this is a Rayleigh distribution and this is gamma distribution. The next thing is exponential and uniform you have and then salt and pepper noise. Salt and pepper noise is also called as uh, the impulse noise because of uh, you know uh, the, so the whole reason uh, uh, is this you, you, you find impulses like uh, you will have only uh, the ne the white dots and uh, the dark you know the black dots on the image so you will have only two impulse two uh, two samples you know two pixel values because of uh, this noise that is why it is called as uh, the impulse noise or uh, salt and pepper noise the next thing is periodic noise uh, sometimes uh, the noise uh, will have a period will be periodic in nature and uh, you can see that these are all the uh, poles that are causing the noise and how we remove the remove such degradation just by taking a band reject filter we take uh, the band reject filter on this uh, image degraded image you can get back your uh, original image this is to remove the periodic noise the next one how do we measure the performance of restoration there are two important measures for this the first one is blurred signal to noise ratio which is a metric that is described that describes the degradation model bsnr is given by 10 log to the base 10 1 over mn summation over i summation over j g of i comma j minus g bar of i comma j whole square divided by sigma n square where g of i comma j is equal to y of i comma j minus eta of i comma j where y of i comma j is equal to h of x comma y convolved with f of x comma y and g bar of i comma j is equal to expectation of g of i comma j. See this g bar of i comma j is uh, simply a constant image. G, is, g bar is simply a constant image which is the worst case uh, performance of uh, your uh, you know, uh, restoration method. So we are sort of comparing our output with respect to the worst case performance of the image restoration algorithms. So BSNR is this and uh, the next thing is improvement in uh, SNR. It validates the performance of the image restoration algorithm again. ISNR is equal to 10 log to the base 10 summation over i comma j uh, f of i comma j minus y of i comma j whole square divided by summation over summation over i comma j f of i comma j minus f at of i comma j whole square. Yeah, you can see this is an improvement in signal to noise ratio. Where is noise at all? You will have a sigma n square here and you will have sigma n square here. They will be cancelled. That is why that sigma n square term is not present here. And one more thing, you can see this y of i comma j is nothing but your uh, uh, h of x comma y convolved with uh, f of x comma y. And f hat of uh, i comma j is nothing but uh, the estimated image. This is what we have and this is what, uh, you know, uh, uh, th this is with respect to the estimated image and this is uh, without noise we can say. So, this is sort of improvement uh, without noise we can say, improvement uh, in signal to noise ratio. This case, this measurement of this is possible only when the input image is available, that is when f of i comma j is available. So, this is uh, uh, simply a simulation that we can do on the artificial data. This we cannot generally use on uh, uh, the natural data. What are the methods of estimation of degradation function? So, we understood that in order to estimate, uh, uh, in order to find out uh, f hat of x y, x comma y, we need uh, degradation function so that uh, I can always do the inverse process in the restoration filter. So, in order to find out uh, the degradation functions, there are uh, generally three methods that are followed. Well, the first one being uh, by observation, second one by experimentation and the third one by mathematical modeling. Methods by observation, by experimentation, and by mathematical modeling. Let us look at one by one. The first method being uh, by observation. What we do? We take sub images that contain uh, a very sharp uh, edge and we apply that to the degradation system in order to obtain the output image. So the degradation function can be estimated by hs of u comma v is equal to gs of u comma v divided by fs of you come out. We will take, we generally take that uh, sub image with a strong signal content or uh, strong edge content so that uh, the effect of the noise is uh, minimized. 
and we take uh, these uh, hs of you know so many these hs of u comma v uh, in order to you know uh, deduce uh, h of u comma v so this is by observation the next thing is by experimentation we will take a similar equipment to acquire the degraded image which yields uh, accurate uh, estimation and uh, you know we take uh, the setup and change the settings to acquire an image which is uh, as close uh, as that of the degraded image and uh, hence you know the degradation uh, the, the degradation function or the transfer function of the degradation can be obtained by h of u comma v is equal to g of u comma v divided by a so it is as simple as this you take a impulse uh, function and we apply this impulse function to the experimental setup and we can obtain the psf psf is nothing but probability sorry excuse me it is a point spread function we apply a point and it gets spread that's why it's called as point point spread function uh, this h of u comma v multiplied with uh, uh, this a is the strength of the impulse that we are applying is equal to g of u comma v so h of u comma v is equal to g of u comma v by a we know that the impulse you know the fourier transform of the impulse is equal to one right so that is the reason g of u comma v is the fourier transform of the observed point spread function point spread image and a is the signal strength a strength of the impulse that we are using then the last one is more uh, easier i am just kidding uh, we, we, we just assume a mathematical model an appropriate mathematical model for the given degradation it's not that easy as i am saying we, we need to come to that uh, mathematical model which is appropriate to that particular uh, uh, degradation that we are considering it is not that easy people have worked a lot on this in order to get those uh, mathematical models and we generally take those models for granted and use here so the examples for that uniform out of focus blur is given by h of uh, the circular this is basically the circular blur h of i comma j is equal to 1 over pi r square if i square plus j square is less than or equal to r square it is equal to 0 otherwise see generally all these uh, blurs that we are considering they are low pass in nature they are basically low pass filters and the next thing uh, is uh, the Hopnagel stanley model this is uh, a mathematical model for uh, the atmospheric turbulence h of u comma v is equal to e power minus k into u square plus v square to the power pi by 6 this constant k it, it that depends on the nature of turbulence so this is uh, for different values of k uh, this is uh, for without you know any with negligible turbulence with severe turbulence with k is equal to 0 0.00, 0 0.0025 this is with k equal to 0 0.001 this is with k equal to 0 0.00025 see this is most you know more degraded image it is obvious it is uh, very much visible for us the next thing is uniform 2d blur this is a rectangle but blur with that consider h of i comma j is equal to 1 over l plus 1 whole square if minus l by 2 less than or equal to i comma j less than or equal to l by 2 otherwise it is equal to 0 and the next thing is uh, we, we want to derive a mathematical uh, model from basic principles so for example if i have motion blur an image blurred by uniform linear motion between the image and the sensor during the image acquisition if such a case we consider let us try to bring out the transfer function of the degradation suppose that Im an image f of x comma y undergoes planar motion uh, and x not x not of t and y not of t are the time varying components of the motion in x and y directions respectively. The optical image processing is perfect, so there is no uh, with the sensor there is no degradation associated. Then let us assume that capital T is the duration of the exposure. So during this time there is relative motion. So how do we get uh, uh, the output image? The output image can be obtained by making the taking the average. Uh, in that particular time you know time uh, that is uh, during which it is exposed so g of x comma y is equal to g integral over 0 to capital t f of x minus x naught of t comma y minus y naught of t dt this x minus x naught of t and y minus y naught of t we are considering because that is the shift happened in that particular time so g of x comma y is equal to that integral let us uh, 
obtain uh, the Fourier transform of it. How do we do that? Apply a Fourier transform on either side. Integral over minus infinite to infinite, integral over minus infinite to infinite, g of x comma y, e power minus j2 pi u r, ux plus vy dx dy. This is the 2D Fourier transform. We know that uh, this integration and for the Fourier transform, they are, uh, you know, uh, linear operations. So, a, we, we can always interchange them. Let us, uh, actually, uh, uh, before that, let us actually uh, uh, take this, uh, substitute this g of x y in this. So, this integral is written here and then uh, that interchanging uh, Fourier transform and this integration we have taken. So, integral over 0 to capital T, integral over minus infinite infinite, integral over minus infinite infinite, f of x minus x naught of t, comma y minus y naught of t, multiplied with e power minus j2 pi ux plus vy dx dy of dt. This is nothing but the Fourier transform of f of x minus x naught of t, comma y minus y naught of t, which is nothing but integral over 0 to capital T. So, this is the Fourier transform of it. f of u comma v multiplied with e power minus j2 pi ux naught of t plus v y naught of t. This is shift uh, the uh, time domain shifting property of uh, the Fourier transform. So, f of u comma v is however independent of t. So, I am writing them outside f of u comma v integral over 0 to capital T e power minus j2 pi ux naught of t plus v y naught of t dt. So, h of u comma v is uh, simply this integral. Let us evaluate this integral uh, by assuming x naught of t is equal to a t by capital T and there is only motion in one direction. Let us make uh, y naught of t is equal to 0. In that case, h of u comma v is equal to integral over 0 to capital T e power minus j2 pi ux naught of t dt. So, if we do the integration, if you substitute x naught of t, this is a at by capital T. If we uh, do the integration, this is e power minus j2 pi u a t by capital T divided by uh, divided by minus j2 pi u a by capital T with the limits 0 to capital T. So, if you substitute the limits uh, and do a bit of uh, uh, algebra, what we get is t by capital T by pi u a multiplied with sin pi u a multiplied with e power minus j pi u a. You take this as an assignment and do it by yourself. This is very important for your exam also. What you need to do, you after getting this, after substituting the limits, you will get something like 1 minus e power minus j 2 pi u a. From that, you have to bring e power j pi u a as common. And then what is going to remain is inside that thing you will get a sinusoidal term. So, this is the clue for you. You try it by yourself and uh, submit it as an assignment. This is very important for the examinations. We can extend, we can always extend it through it for the both directions by substituting x naught of t is equal to a t by capital T and y naught of t is equal to b t by capital T. So, this extension is uh, very simple I think. You can do it by yourself. So, this is the original image, this is the uh, degraded image by uh, that we have obtained by applying uh, the transfer function that we have just deduced. So, what are the categorization of restoration methods? The restoration methods could be classified as follows. See, this is what I am trying to teach you now. You have the knowledge of uh, the degradation function, then how do we obtain our image back. That is what I am talking about. Restoration methods can be classified uh, based on the methods uh, that we follow. First one, deterministic. We work with simply by sample processing of uh, the observed image. So, it is a deterministic method. Stochastic method, we work with the statistics of the image rather than the original image itself. The next one, non-blind. For non-blind, capital H is uh, known to us. So, we use that uh, capital H in order to get back our original image, restore our original image and for blind uh, method, uh, we do not have the knowledge of capital H or we might have a partially, a partly uh, knowledge, a partial knowledge of capital H. From the viewpoint of implementation, we have it direct, iterative and recursive. You already know what does all these three things mean. The next thing, let us uh, look at uh, how do we uh, get back our uh, signal by using, uh, you know, uh, by doing uh, this filtering in frequency domain. 
uh, see the aim here is to prove that uh, we can use the DFT uh, in order to get back our uh, original image uh, from the degraded image or we can to get back the restored image from the degraded image. Let us consider a one dimensional degradation model. Consider a discrete signal f of i where 0 less than or equal to i less than or equal to capital E minus 1 resulted from a linear shift invariant degradation whose impulse response is given by h of i. So, the length of it is 0 less than or equal to i less than or equal to b minus 1 means it means that the length of h is capital B. Now, we need to consider the extended version of f of i and h of i and we uh, assume you know it is for proper periodic uh, convolution we will generally do this we have f of i whose length is capital a and we have h of i whose length is capital b so before uh, uh, starting the degradation uh, the restoration method what we do we make the length of uh, both the sequences to be same so that we can do the circular convolution or the periodic convolution we generally make the length of that equal to a plus b minus 1. So, uh, let us say the extended versions are fe of i and he of i. Then ye of i is nothing but fe of i circularly convolved with he of i uh, plus uh, eta e of i where eta e of i is representing the noise. So, ye of i is equal to summation over m equal to 0 to m minus 1 fe of m he of i minus m modulo m plus eta e of i this is noise of course. So, using the matrix notation we can represent the convolution using a matrix multiplication. So, y is equal to h of plus eta is what we have where f is f e of 0, f e of 1, so on f e of m minus 1 and capital H is the succulent matrix that we have h e of 0, h e of 1, h e of m minus 1 and the next column is obtained by simply taking uh, this you know circularly shifting with the first column h e of m minus 1 uh, go uh, upstairs like uh, to the uh, first uh, element h e of m minus 1 h e of 0 h e of m minus 2 and the last column is h e of 1 h e of 2 so on h e of 0. Let w k denote the kth basis vector of the Fourier transform. We know that the basis vectors of unitary DFT are the orthonormal eigenvectors of any circular matrix. So, the eigenvalues of circular matrix are given by DFT of its first column. This is a very important property of the Fourier transform that we have derived in image transforms chapter. I think it is the uh, second chapter, right? No, third chapter, right? So, what does it mean for any circular matrix? If you find uh, the orthonormal eigenvectors that turn out to be the basis vectors of the Fourier transform and the eigenvalues are simply the DFT quotients of the first column of the matrix, right. So, in that case h into wk is equal to lambda k wk. So, h into w naught w1 so on wm minus 1 is equal to lambda naught w naught lambda 1 w1 so on lambda n minus 1 wm minus 1 this is lambda m minus 1 this can be written as hw is equal to and this is w into lambda so it implies that uh, let us multiply w star transpose on uh, the left side i don't yeah this side so uh, if i do that w w star transpose is equal to i so h is equal to w lambda w star transpose. So, this is the diagonal form of the matrix capital H. We know that y is equal to h of plus eta for the sake of simplicity and without loss of general. For the sake of simplicity and without loss of generality, let us assume eta equal to 0 which will result in y is equal to hf uh, which implies that h is nothing but w lambda w star transpose y is equal to w lambda w star transpose uh, multiplied with f. This w star transpose multiplied with f is nothing but capital F, the Fourier, uh, you know, transform the DFT of uh, this DFT of the vector f. Uh, see, you might have, uh, you might be getting confused that v is equal to au, so we should be having v, you know, 
or capital F is equal to W into F. Remember, the basis vectors are the column vectors of A star transpose, not A. So, here, what did we assume? We assumed that WK is a, the kth basis vector of the Fourier transform. So, W is here your A star transpose. So, W is equal to A star transpose. So, A is equal to W star transpose. Okay, that is why we are having a capital F is equal to W star transpose into small f. And yeah, let us multiply W star transpose on either side here. W star transpose into Y is equal to W star transpose into W lambda W star transpose F. This W tra star transpose W is nothing but I. This is nothing but capital Y. This is capital F. So, y, we have capital Y is equal to lambda into F. If I, ha if I want to have the kth element uh, in this vector capital Y, so Y of K is equal to lambda of K multiplied with F of K. So, Y of K is equal to lambda of K multiplied with F of K. So, F of K is equal to Y of K divided by lambda of K, but 0 less than or equal to K less than or equal to M minus 1. If once I know capital F, I can always get my small f very easily by just taking the inverse uh, transform. What did we achieve here? We achieved a very important thing. Actually, if you see f y is equal to hf, so if I want f, f is equal to h inverse into y. It is a matrix inversion problem. By applying Fourier transform, what did we achieve? We have achieved like we we converted that matrix inverse problem into n scalar inverse problems. M scalar inverse problems. Computing m scalar inverses is you know it is very easier it's very very easier i don't know what is the degree of uh, uh, comparison i should use but it is the most easier thing when compared with the well you know finding the inverse of a matrix finding the inverse of a matrix is very computationally expensive so that is what we achieved next thing is the uh, Another uh, way of doing the same thing, this is actually called as inverse filtering. Okay, uh, before going to that, how do we do this for a two-dimensional discrete degradation model? The two-dimensional discrete, the two-dimensional two case can be written as y of i comma j is equal to summation from m comma n equal to 0 to n minus 1, f e of m comma n multiplied with h e of i minus m comma j minus n modulo m plus eta e of i comma j the first uh, term in this is representing the circular convolution and the second term is representing the noise in matrix notation we use the row ordered vector form so this is uh, curvy y this is curvy y is equal to curvy h multiplied with curvy uh, f the row ordered vector form of uh, you know the image plus curvy eta i you remember i used this curvy uh, uh, word in order to differentiate where curvy h is the block matrix, doubly circular block matrix, h0, h0, h1, hn minus 1, then circularly shifting it, hn minus 1, h0, hn minus 2, so on, h1, h2, so on, hn minus 1. And similarly, hj, they are again uh, uh, circular matrices obtained by, no, circularly shifting uh, the first column, you will get the remaining columns. So, with a similar analysis as that of the one dimensional case, y of u comma v is equal to h of u comma v multiplied with f of u comma v with theta of u comma v is equal to 0 and h of u comma v is equal to y of u comma v divided by f of u comma v. So, let us move on. So, let us see another perspective of the same thing what we have done you now using the scalar notation here. Okay, again uh, inverse filter, this is also called as inverse filtering. What do we do here? In this problem, we know capital H and uh, we know G and we are looking for uh, an F, which is the estimate of the original image. The problem is formulated as follows. We are looking to minimize the Euclidean norm of the error, the, minimum, the mean square error we are trying to minimize. We are trying to find out an F such that the second norm of G minus HF square is getting minimized. That means we are simply, uh, we remember that uh, 
yeah we remember that y is equal to h of plus eta so this y here is represented here as g g is equal to h of plus eta so h into f is equal to okay uh, so eta is equal to g minus h of eta is equal to g minus h of so we are trying to minimize that noise here the first derivative of you know, you know whenever you are doing such a minimization thing what we are going to do we take the first derivative and make it equal to zero so the first derivative of norm of g minus h of square should be equal to zero this is what we try to do so what is g minus norm of second norm of g minus h of square if we assume that g h and f are uh, uh, real then the star notation is not required because conjugate uh, is same as the original original uh, quantity so g minus h of uh, square is equal to g minus h of transpose multiplied with g minus h of so this multiplication expanding this g transpose minus this h of transpose is nothing but f transpose h transpose multiplied with g minus h of so this is g transpose g plus g trans uh, minus g transpose h of minus f transpose h transpose g minus into minus plus f transpose h transpose h of so this is the final uh, expression that we got if i differentiate this with respect to f uh, this will this we will get uh, these two terms are uh, one and the same so we will get minus 2h transpose g plus uh, this term is nothing but uh, 2h transpose h into f that is what we are going to get here g transpose g is independent of f so that will become zero what i want i want uh, f so f is equal to 2 2 will get cancelled so f is equal to bringing that to the other side h transpose h into f is equal to h transpose g f is equal to h transpose h pole inverse multiplied with h transpose g this is nothing but the least squared uh, solution that we have seen so inverse filtering is nothing but the least squared solution if h is a square matrix and its inverse exists then f is equal to h inverse into g inverse filtering is a deterministic and direct method for uh, image restoration the images involved must be lexico lexicographically ordered don't worry this is simply saying uh, the row ordered uh, vector an image of size uh, 256 by 256 is converted into a column vector of uh, size uh, 65536 by 1 i told you it's a row ordered vector form of the image the degradation model is written uh, in a matrix form whereas the where the images or vectors and degradation process is a huge uh, but sparse matrix g is equal to h in h of the above relation is ideal but generally you will have eta along with that so g is equal to h of plus eta this is for the two dimensional case inverse filtering in two dimensional case so uh, if, we, if we do that same thing in frequency domain let us see what happens we have h transpose h into f is equal to h transpose g we take uh, the fourier transform on either side then uh, uh, this relationship will become h of u comma v models of h of u comma v whole square multiplied with the f of u comma v we know that the matrix multiplication becomes uh, the scalar multiplication that's what i have written here so h models of h of u comma v whole square f of u comma v is equal to h of u comma v star multiplied with g of u comma v so f of u comma v is equal to h of u comma v star divided by models of h of u comma v whole square multiplied with g of u comma v finally f of u comma v is equal to g of u comma v divided by h of u comma v this we know it's at the starting itself just to make sure that we follow the actual procedure i have explained you this we already know we have seen it here itself right y is equal to h of plus eta uh, yeah here maybe y is equal to uh, f of m comma n convolved with h of m comma n so capital y of u comma v is equal to f of u comma v multiplied with h of u comma v so it is the same thing that we are discussing again f of u comma v is equal to g of u comma v divided by h of u comma v note that for most of the popular types of degradations we will have low pass filters h of u comma v will be in general low pass filter in that case what is going to happen as we are as the value of u comma v is increasing h of u comma v is going to become very small which makes our lives difficult so we have that f of u comma v is equal to h of u comma g of u comma v divided by h of u comma v 
it is very likely that hf u comma v is zero for very or very small at certain frequency pairs. Uh, if we take h of u comma v is a sinc function, then obviously we can observe that. So, what is the point? f of u comma v can blow up because h of, 1 over h of u comma v is a very small value. f of u comma v can blow up. That is the point I am trying to make. So, this is the example of inverse filtering in noise free conditions. This is the h of u comma v, a typical h of u comma v, sin function I am showing you here. As you, as the value of u and v is increasing, you can see that uh, the value of h of u comma v is decreasing and become negligibly zero. Here it is shown uh, the periodic extension of the image along both x and uh, y directions. So, in case of noisy conditions, f of u comma v is equal to g of u comma v minus eta of u comma v divided by h of u comma v. This g of u comma v divided by h of u comma v minus eta of u comma v divided by h of u comma v. Uh, this is nothing but your f of u comma v minus f at of u comma v minus eta of u comma v divided by h of u comma v. See, this is the point I am trying to make. This is uh, uh, if h of u comma v is very small, then the noise is getting multiplied with a, a very large number. That means noise is getting amplified. So, f hat of the effect of f hat of u comma v will be very negligible when compared with the noise in that case. So, the restorative image will not be good at all in that case. So, inverse filtering fails if h of u comma v is a low pass filter. Generally, h of u comma v is a low pass filter. So, this problem will happen uh, definitely in inverse filtering. What to do to avoid? The problem is that h of u comma v is going to become zero at uh, values you know for uh, higher values of u comma v so what to do let us not consider those values while we are computing uh, f of u comma v so f of u comma v is equal to g of u comma v divided by h of u comma v for h of u comma v not equal to 0 or it is greater than a particular value otherwise it should be equal to 0 so we are not considering h of u comma v at higher frequencies which are actually causing the trouble to us because h of u comma v is almost uh, equal to 0 for higher values of u and v. So, this is the solution that we have. We call this as pseudo inverse filtering which is a generalization of inverse filtering. The next thing is, uh, yeah, this is the output. This is uh, uh, restored uh, using the full filter. We have seen this image earlier, the degraded image. So, this is the output of the full filter. This is the output uh, with a cutoff frequency 40. This is output with cutoff frequency 70. And this is output with cutoff frequency 85. I am talking about the pseudo inverse filter. And the cutoff is uh, this one, h of u comma v is equal to 0 beyond uh, these cutoff frequencies. The important thing I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, understand is, there is no particular value of cutoff frequency which will uh, definitely work something like that. You cannot say that uh, for this particular uh, as uh, d not as the cutoff frequency is increasing or decreasing, the performance of the method will bet will get better or will get worse. It cannot be stated. It is just by trial and error purely we obtained a better result for d not equal to 70, and we have seen uh, by increasing the value, but we got a poor result. We decrease the value, we got a poor result. So, we never know where exactly a better result can be obtained. So, this is pseudo inverse filtering for you. This is another example of with a different threshold. This is the original image, and uh, this is another image uh, uh, with a different uh, cutoff frequencies uh, different or different thresholds. You can see that there are these ghosts uh, appearing here because of the pseudo inverse filtering. The ringing effect and all right you know the ringing effect we have discussed that a lot in uh, the image enhancement chapter so moving on uh, this is pseudo inverse filtering in uh, noisy scenario you can see that the full filter uh, is completely filed in this case but uh, uh, pseudo inverse filter with, a, with some threshold we have obtained uh, we can see cameraman but Still, this image is not good. We, we we need to get something better. So, how to do that? By taking the constrained least square solution. It refers to a very large class of uh, a very large number of restoration algorithms and the problem can be formulated as follows. 
j of f is equal to summation you know the second norm of eta of f square is equal to the second norm of y minus h of square and subjected to this constraint second norm of c of square is less than epsilon the second norm of c of square is less than epsilon it is saying that the high frequency content of the image should be small this is to make sure that the estimate that we are trying to obtain is not too much noisy if it is uh, if we are trying to exactly fit y with hf and y itself is uh, very much noisy then what is going to happen we are going to end up with a noisy estimate so in order to avoid that we are trying to reduce the frequency content uh, you know high frequency content uh, in f the and uh, in f such that the noise content is uh, reduced the fundamental assumption is this we are uh, assuming that the, we, we have a high frequency noise not in band noise uh, in the image f so uh, i'm just uh, uh, repeating this again we are trying to generalize this problem of inverse filtering by adding another constraint that the high frequency content of the image should not be greater than a particular value okay this is for generalization or regularization the idea behind the above constraint is that the high frequency version of the image contains a considerably large amount of noise just what i have you know this is what i have explained uh, this can be solved by using uh, the lagrange uh, multipliers constraint least square restoration can be formulated by choosing an f to minimize the lagrangian minimize uh, it is the j of f is equal to the minimum of uh, norm of y minus h of square plus alpha into norm of c of square one of the choice of c you know the high pass mask is nothing but the laplacian and alpha represents here the lagrangian multiplier which is also known as regularization parameter if alpha is more this term will have uh, will be dominant in this expression and hence more and more uh, high frequency components f from f will be minimized so it will have uh, a you know it will have uh, uh, that completely the high frequency components will be removed from f if this is very small then this quantity uh, will uh, you no know, uh, will be uh, will shoot up that means uh, f may end up being uh, a noisy observation so the minimization of the above uh, of this one is very much similar to what we have done in the inverse filtering you take uh, the first derivative and make it equal to zero and if you do that this is what you are going to get f is equal to h transpose h the alpha into c transpose c full inverse into h transpose y if you just put alpha equal to 0 here this is h transpose h full inverse multiplied with h transpose by your inverse filtering itself so alpha equal to 0 is nothing but your inverse filtering case if you take it in frequency domain applying a uh, uh, fourier transform on either side by multiplying uh, it with w star transpose then what is going to happen we know that h is equal to w d w d h w inverse what is the value the fourier transform matrix and d h is nothing but the lambda vector i mean to say the lambda matrix the eigen matrix and h transpose is similarly this h transpose h will be w multiplied with uh, d h square the lambda square multiplied with w star i am not get i am not writing transpose because this is symmetric matrix w and w star are trans symmetric Similarly, C transpose C is equal to W uh, d square d c square W star. And if you do the mathematics, you know, after applying, uh, it is simply the matrix multiplication. The matrix mul uh, inversion will become a scalar inversion. So this is what we are going to get. F of u comma v is equal to H star of u comma v divided by modulus of H of u comma v square plus alpha into modulus of C of u comma v. Whole square multiplied with f of u comma v. If you put alpha equal to zero, this is this is nothing but simply y of u comma v divided by h of u comma v. You don't worry too much about these mathematics. But this derivation here, obtaining this is important for your exam. What are the computational issues? This we have already seen. If alpha is more, more and more uh, uh, high frequency components will be removed. resulting uh, in more blurring of the image and sharp cut off frequency and hence ringing will happen if alpha is very small the f is going to become uh, you know more noisy estimate a popular choice of alpha is to consider 
alpha is equal to 1 over BSNR, the blurred signal to noise ratio. These are all uh, uh, the previous methods are deterministic methods. We can uh, have a stochastic method as, uh, as well. So here, uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to minimize the, the error between uh, the original image and f hat of i comma j. So uh, the mathematics you already uh, did it in probability. This is nothing but your Wiener filter, which is the minimum mean square error filter. So uh, this expectation of f minus f hat. Uh, a star transpose multiplied with f minus f hat. The star is removed because they are assuming that it is real. So I have, I have expanded that expectation of f hat of minus f multiplied with y minus expectation of uh, y transpose is equal to zero. This is because the error must be orthogonal to the observation about the mean. So if you simplify, this is what you will get. F hat is equal to RFF multiplied with h transpose multiplied with h into RFF h transpose plus rn and whole inverse into y if you apply the fourier uh, transform on either side you will get f hat of u comma v is equal to sff u of u comma v multiplied with h star of u comma v divided by sff u comma v multiplied with modulus of h of u comma v whole square plus h eta eta u comma v multiplied with y, of, y, y of u comma v this is nothing but your signal power and s eta of u comma v is nothing but your noise power this is this looks complicated, but this is very easy to get. Uh, these derivations and all are not very important to you, so you don't worry about them. But this quantity is very, you know, you can see the relation uh, uh, of this with the inverse filtering very easily. Okay, uh, we'll see that first. Okay, so S of f of u comma v, I am going to bring that uh, to the denominator. If I do that, this will be simply h star of u comma v divided by Modulus of h of u comma u squared divided by 1 over SNR of this. Signal power, uh, signal, noise power divided by signal power, which is nothing but some, uh, uh, you know, 1 over SNR is what we are going to have. And if I assume that uh, uh, this quantity is nearly 0, then what is going to happen? This is uh, h star of u comma v divided by modulus of h of u comma v whole square, which is nothing but again your 1 over h of u comma v. So, this is nothing but uh, your inverse filter again. But there is a problem with this. You need uh, the knowledge of both S eta of u comma v as well as uh, SF of u comma v. So, you need signal power as well as noise power which are uh, not available for you. So, what, what you are going to do instead of considering uh, that 1 over SNR, we consider some constant. We consider some constant. I will put it in another way. There is a, there's a problem that is coming uh, here in inverse filtering. We are having uh, f of u comma v is equal to uh, something like y of u comma v by h of u comma v. And h of u comma v is sort of becoming zero. And hence we are having a problem. So what we did here, we just uh, normalized that. Then uh, we have added a constant in the denominator. So that the denominator will never become zero. And hence the problem of h of u comma v becoming zero is bypassed. So this is the importance of a Wiener filter and most of the cases Wiener filter and constraint least squares their performance will be almost similar. Uh, this shows results of constraint least squares and uh, A, B and C with the Wiener filter. Uh, okay, uh, this is nothing but your Wiener filter result and this is the actual image I think. So with this we will stop, we'll we have completed image restoration and your syllabus as well.